What up techies? If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Today we explore something crazy that can happen here on Earth, and how we may prevent it, though it might seem like something out of a horror movie. Rabies is an actual virus that can infect mammals. The virus attacks the nervous system and causes symptoms such as fever, anxiety, confusion, and seizures. In extreme cases, rabies can lead to death. But is rabies a virus that could turn us all into zombies? Let's take a closer look at this scary virus. Rabies is caused by Lysivirus, a member of the Rhabdoviridae family. The virus is found in the saliva of infected animals and can be transmitted through bites or scratches. Once the virus enters the body, it travels to the brain where it begins to replicate. The virus then spreads to other parts of the body causing the characteristic symptoms of rabies. The lysivirus has been around for at least 4,000 years. Beyond the fact that it is strange and lethal, the infection carried by Lyssa also intrigues us due to our inability to stop it. A virus needs only a few genetic instructions and a few living cells to replicate. The lysivirus has both of these in spades, as it can easily infect any mammal. Even if we could find a way to vaccinate every animal on Earth, the lysivirus would still find a way to infect us. It is a hidden enemy lurking in the shadows, waiting to strike. A virus as simple as the lysivirus is relatively straightforward despite its complexity. Just five genes, or instructions for five proteins, allow it to handle complex problems, infect a mammal, bypass its immune system, enter its brain, multiply, and spread to new hosts. In most cases, it begins with a dog's saliva carrying millions of viruses penetrating deep into the tissue. Your neurons and nerve cells are what it's after. Cellular machinery is on one end, and a terminal is on the other end of these living electrochemical wires, stretching up to 1.5 meters. Cells communicate via this terminal by exchanging molecules that carry information. As a result of possible interaction with one or more of these receptors, Lissa can enter the nerve cells unnoticed. The virus is faced with a significant challenge. Because neurons are so lengthy, it can be difficult for the virus to reach the cellular machinery and take over the cell. If you think about it, our cells are a lot like little city-states. They have their internal laws and systems that keep things running smoothly. And, just like any city, they need an excellent infrastructure to function correctly. Enter the cell's microtubules. These tiny structures are like the backbone of our bodies, providing essential stability and strength. They also play an important role in transporting vital packages around the cell. The delivery system used by microtubules bears a striking resemblance to a little pair of shoes. But don't worry, these shoes are very sophisticated motors called dynein. What's even more impressive is that dynein proteins outnumber viruses by 10 to 1. This gives them a significant advantage when hijacking the cell's machinery for their purposes. So, next time you look in the mirror, remember that you owe a big thank you to your microtubules. When a virus infects your citizen cells, they play an essential role in triggering your immune system. When they realize they've been infected, they release many interferons, a protein family that acts as an antiviral defense. Interferons tell your immune system to produce antivirus weaponry. In addition, they instruct civilian cells to temporarily shut down their protein factories, preventing viruses from reactivating. The fact that the interferons tell your cells to become ultra-transparent is critical since your immune cells cannot detect the presence of viruses inside your civilian cells. To solve this problem, the MHC class I molecules your body produces act as transparent windows into your inside organs. Immune cells need to see what is going on inside the cells to fight off invaders. So cells take random samples of their products and place them in tiny display windows. Interferon instructs your cells to produce a disproportionately large number of display windows and become remarkably transparent. Infected cells are driven to generate viral components and your immune cells will notice these parts in a window and command the infected cell to kill itself and all the viruses trapped inside. Viral infections can be effectively eradicated with this strategy. On the other hand, Lissa virus prevents your neurons from producing interferons, making it almost undetectable by your immune system. Unlike many other viruses, it does not kill the host as it replicates, raising the ire of security systems. Instead, it sneaks up on you, hopping from neuron to neuron. Many factors, such as whether the bite occurred on your face or foot or how many viruses were injected into your muscles, play a role in how long this phase lasts. Lissa is a stoic monster that never gives up, and your brainstem is its ultimate target. Finally, the immune system realizes that something is wrong and responds. Your most potent antivirus cells, known as killer T cells, are sent on a mission to hunt out and eliminate infected cells and their threat. This would be a pivotal moment in other viral infections, but in rabies, the T-cells are speeding toward oblivion. 
With five proteins, Simple Lissa can play a one-of-a-kind reversal card against the immune system. When it comes to protecting your brain and nerve system, the immune system has to be highly cautious. Ill-administered immune cells in your brain are a quick way to perish. As a result, they can't just wander into your nervous system. You have to welcome them in, and then you may throw them out. If your nerve cells believe your immune system is overreacting, they can instruct T-cells to self-destruct. Lissa devised a means to have the infected neurons express this order. Your formidable defense cells are therefore given the order to commit suicide as soon as they arrive. The virus has now made its way into the brainstem. You will perish if you get to this point. To make matters worse, we still don't know how or why a person infected with Lissa virus dies. Most of the time, when we think about viruses harming, we imagine that they grow rapidly and then kill their host cells once they have multiplied enough to induce an immune response that inflicts significant damage. This, however, does not appear to be the case. The brains of rabies victims reveal little to no damage or, in some instances, no damage. Lissa's current theory is that she wreaks havoc by disrupting your brain's cell communication to the point where it can no longer operate. Confusion, aggression, and paralysis are all signs of this disease. The neurotransmitter continues to travel via the brain's neurons and proceeds toward the salivary glands. This is interesting because the virus reverses its route after moving one way, and we still don't understand how this works after decades of research. Eventually, the enraged mammal will bite another and repeat the cycle. There have been no reported examples of humans biting each other and transmitting rabies, so this does not appear to be the beginning of a zombie pandemic. But if you did get bit, you would have encephalitis, and brain inflammation that causes many unpleasant neurological symptoms. Your organs begin to fail, and there is no known treatment for Lyssa, and only a few people have survived this disease. However, there is a vaccine that may be able to save your life. Humans developed a vaccine for rabies, one of the first diseases for which one existed. As with all vaccines, it helps to get your immune system ready for a potential attack by priming it with the appropriate antibodies in large quantities. As soon as you are inoculated, the horrifying tricks of basic linsa no longer operate. In addition, the vaccine is unique in that it can be administered to you after you have already been exposed to Lissa because she moves so slowly in the first few weeks. As a result, even after being bitten by an animal, you can still receive a vaccination. If you've had contact with a sick wild animal, such as a bat, you may not even notice a bite from its tiny teeth. Our ancestors were scared of Lissa virus rabies and had every right to be. This disease has been with us for thousands of years and is still a real threat today. Nearly half of Lissa virus rabies deaths each year are in young children, and this monster still lurks in the shadows, on trees, and in the bodies of animals of all types, ready to strike again if we ever let our guard down. So please pray that one day we can put this monster to rest for good. Until then, there's much more to learn about Lissa virus rabies and how to prevent it. Thanks for joining, and please like and subscribe to our channel.